What are you currently listening to? Welcome back to After Hour Happy Hour. We are your chaotic but cathartic co-hosts. I'm Sharon. I'm Vicky. I'm Jamila. So today we're back with our music sesh special number three, where we talk about our favorite song and artist of the week. So let's get started. I can start off. The song that I chose is called Control by Zoe Weiss. If I'm pronouncing her name wrong, I'm sorry. But what did you guys think of it? I really liked it. Dude, this song is why I love music so much. Like this song, uh, when that chorus dropped, I literally got goosebumps. And I was like, wow, I love music. Well, I'm really shook right now. I didn't think Vicky would react that way. Really? Yeah. So this time around, I actually looked up lyrics while listening to it. And I don't know if it's because I know the meaning behind the song that added to the song. But when that chorus dropped, I was like, whoa, this is so good. I think it also, I really liked it because it's a power vocal, a female power vocal. Mm -hmm. And you're really into that. Yep, definitely that too. Wow, I think that's the first time you've reacted like that to one of my song choices. So. Yay! Yeah, I was very, whoa, like Sharon likes this song. But at the same time, I can see why you like it. It kind of reminds me of Different by Woods. I think it's because of the bass musicality of it, maybe. Mm. I would disagree with Vicky's comment about being similar to, oh, it's a different, just kidding, I thought I was saying accident, never mind. Uh, I have a pretty different reaction. It's not that I didn't like it, but I wasn't crazy about it as I was with Sharon's Choice from the previous music sesh. I'll listen to it if it came on, but it wasn't something that I'll add to my playlist to keep listening. I thought the reaction of your guys would be opposite. I thought Jam would really like it and I thought Vicky would be like meh about it. So I'm confused. (laughs) (laughs) What? I don't even know what our music taste is anymore. I'm just choosing songs because I like them at this point. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so I was originally going to pick an R&B song, but because I chose an R&B song or K R and b song last week, I wanted to pick a different genre. So she's considered pop. So for background, first of all, she's 18 years old, I think. I think she's a 2002 baby. And this was her debut song, which charted number one. So like... Congrats to her, and honestly, I think it's a great debut song considering she's only 18. Crazy. And I think she's from Germany, but this song is about... Basically, when she was growing up, she had epilepsy, and she would just suddenly experience loss of control. And because of that, she felt like she was excluded in a lot of her childhood you know, growing up. And this song is basically about losing control. And it's dedicated to, I think, her teacher, who at the time really helped her through that and through her episodes. So her singing about it so that other people can listen to it and relate potentially and heal from it. I thought that was really powerful. So that's kind of also why I wanted to share this song. I have goosebumps just listening to you tell the story. Like, yeah. It's like throwing me back to listening to the song for the first time and that feeling of whoa. The backstory of the song definitely adds a lot more to the song just from listening because I didn't really listen to the lyrics either. (laughs) So my artist is also very young. I believe she just turned 18 or she's going, yeah, she just turned 18. And the song is called (laughs) Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo. And I'm pretty sure everybody and their mamas know, but I don't know if everybody knows the story behind the song because it's juicy. It's so juicy. But what's everybody's opinion on it before I spill the tea? I'll use Sharon's phrasing and say, not for me, not my cup of tea. Why do you guys hate me? You don't like it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't really like it. (sighs) Listen to it again. I tried. Didn't (laughs) like it either. I I gave it, I gave both your songs at least two listens to, to make sure. But yeah, driver's license wasn't really my cup of tea. So 
I know that this song went viral, and I only know that because I got a TikTok through this podcast we're doing. So if it wasn't for this podcast, I would have no idea. But I heard it for the first time, and I was like, okay. And then I listened to it a second time, and I think I got the backstory of it. And I was like, this is really good. And I personally really liked it because I feel like her song is a story, and there's three different pieces of the song that sound pretty different from each other. And I swear it's like I was reading a book. So there's like what is it called? Like rising action and the climax and then whatever. That's how it felt. And the part where she sings, for example, I think red lights, stop signs, or something、mm. like that. That part sounds completely different from the beginning and the middle of her song. So I really like the evolution aspect of it. So I enjoyed it. I added it to my sad chill playlist. I mean, you know, good for her for is it being the first Filipino girl or first Filipino female singer to chart number one? Oh, I didn't know that. Well, the story itself is interesting, but she's also really talented, so I can see why she blew up. But she's also from High School Musical, the musical, the series show from Disney. For those people who don't know, Sharon, yeah, I didn't know、uh, that. Fucking Jamila, wait, is she the one? She's the main girl. Oh, so so、name? background story for people who don't know: me and Jamila watched this series together. She didn't know that this girl was the main character, but yeah. So this girl is the main character from that show, and the reason why I recommended it is because my sister is in love with the show because she thinks it's really good, and I also think it's really good in terms of a remake of High School Musical. It's such a classic that they didn't mess up this remake, so I'm happy with that. But the story of the song is so juicy. So her and the guy that was her partner in that series, they dated in real life, and the song is about how they broke up because that guy, his name is Joshua Bassett, I think. He basically they broke up, and then he dated a girl, Sabrina Carpenter, who is like twenty one and a lot older than her. And originally, when she wrote this song, the current lyrics is her blonde hair, da 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 da. But then before she released the song, she would do little snippets on her Instagram, and it would say her brunette stuff. And then she like finally got the balls to change it to blonde for the actual release to really signify that the song was about Josh Bassett and how they broke up. Up, and then he moved on to a girl significantly older than her, and like everything he said about her was not true, and how heartbroken she is.、And、I was just like, wow, it's really her whole ass journal in a song, and it's really a story. And I have so much props for her for being seventeen, eighteen, and writing a song like this, and just letting the world know her feelings. That's the story of the song, and it's so juicy. The guy also released a song two days ago, and there's tea over that too. Apparently, because the song sounds like it's targeted at Olivia. He dropped the song as a response to hers. No, 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 no. I think it was just a song that he had written or something, and then it just so happened that he dropped it like a week after she went viral for her song about him. Yeah, that's all I had to say. That was the tea about. Olivia Rodrigo, but I I do genuinely really like the song, and I feel like it's a good late night song. Okay, I'll give it one more listen. Did you listen to the lyrics? No. I think it, listening to the lyrics will make you be like, oh, I'm not a big lyrics person. Like,、mm-hmm. yes, lyrics could obviously tell the story to the song, and it makes it brings so much meaning to it. But when I first listen to the song, I am I lean more towards musicality, and then if I like it, then I look into the lyrics. So I don't fall in love with song because of lyrics. I fall in love with song because of its music, and then the lyrics could add into it. Interesting. I'm the opposite way. Yeah. One day I'll have a song you guys both like. The thing is, I feel like I like songs you recommended, but then when it comes to songs that we recommend on the podcast, it just so happens it doesn't align. Because you know we're really similar when it came to Jay Park's、um, compilation albums. Like we both、mm-hmm. really like that album. We both really like Rich Brian's album. But I don't know why when it comes to recommendations on the podcast, it just doesn't align quite right. <laughs> I think I choose a very huge variety for this. Maybe, maybe Jam just doesn't like pop because Vicky and my songs were pop. That's true. Yeah, I wouldn't say I listen to pop often. Okay, Jam's turn. 
Okay, so my song was called Into It by Chase Atlantic. What do you guys think of it? Okay, I will say I don't think either of you guys would like it because it was kind of like the be- weekend vibes. And I know Sharon does not like the weekend. And I don't know how Vicky feels about the weekend. So I liked it, but on the I won't add it to any playlist <laughs> liked it. Yeah, I wasn't sure how you feel about it. Yeah, you know what it reminded me of though? So the first half of the song I was like, this is kind of EDM ish. And then I listened to it more and I realized it wasn't. And it reminded me of DVSN's first album, September 5th, that hallucination, that entire album. I feel like this would fit into that really well. I would need to re-listen to the album, but I remember liking that album. So perhaps. (laughs) But yeah, it's it's like R&B vibes. Yeah, definitely a baby making song. So, Oh, actually, I think I added it to my baby. (laughs) (laughs) Now that you remind me, I feel like after I listened to the entire song, I think I added it to that playlist. Okay, well, I guess I'll take you by surprise then because I really liked it and I added it to my playlist. And I wanted to get confirmation before I said it out loud that I felt like, if anything, it sounded like The Weeknd, even though I do not listen to The Weeknd, nor do I really know what he sounds like. But (laughs) I got The Weeknd vibes, so I was surprised. So I was going to ask, yeah. is The weekend's music like this? Because then... It is. I don't think I like The weekend's voice. I don't know. I, I should probably Baby. listen to his other songs then. I think his new album that just came out like recently was okay. But my favorite album that's also kind of similar to this vibes is Beauty Behind Madness. It was basically the songs of like Often Acquainted, which is why I felt like it was very weekend vibes, which is why I thought you wouldn't like it. I found it interesting because I listened to it the first time and I really liked the musicality aspect, the beats Mm -hmm. part of it. And then I listened to it a second time more for the lyrics. And I like that because from what I got, I don't know if you'll tell the story of what the song is about, but from what, what I got, it was that he was singing about, you know, being a celebrity or being in this spotlight and having the pros and cons of both sides, but being into it. Because he sings something about how he could do whatever he wants, kind of, and he's kind of into it. But then also flexing, kind of, blah, 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 and he's into it, too. So I was like, oh, I like both the musicality and the singing aspect of it. So, Well, first of all, I'm glad that both of you guys add to your playlist. That's another one for me. <laughs> but I did not look into the lyrics or the story. <laughs> so I might be super wrong. No, you're right. Yeah. I was looking at the lyrics on Genius and basically the song is about how life has changes and how you adapt to it. And so him being in fame, he's adjusting to it, but also adapting that he likes it and stuff. Good job, guys. Thanks for digging into the background info of my song choice. I'm telling you guys, I really like songs on like musicality more than lyrics. Yeah, I can see why you like it. When I first listened to it, I was like, yep, this sounds like a jam song. You know where I found this song? Making Out to Part 4. <laughs> I found it on TikTok. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Like someone I, used the song? Like, I, I think someone used, used a song in a clip or something or as background music. And I thought, oh, I really oh. like this. So then I added it. Or I looked it up and I added it to my playlist. So shout out to TikTok. Yeah, fan videos and TikToks are great places to look for music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like on Instagram for GOT7 accounts, like GOT7 fan accounts, when they use music to make their videos, I'll be like, oh, I like this song. Let me just add this to mm-hmm. my playlist. Same. Maybe the next music session will all have a song for each other that we all like and we'll add it in. <laughs> yeah, I think if we, it's because. Sometimes we choose a song that we like versus sometimes we choose a song that we like, but we also think everyone else will like. So it depends mm-hmm. on what route we go, you know? Yeah. Okay, I don't know if we asked this before, but who is somewhat, or after, you know, quarantine's over and when concerts and things are normal again, who's an artist that you really, really want to see, but you haven't yet? Chica. I'm sorry oh. if I say her name wrong. Who's that? I only know industry games. Yeah, she. I don't think I've recommended a song on here from her, 
but she is a hip hop artist and she got really big last year, I guess, 2020, off her EP, I think, EP or an album. But a really good rapper, very talented, and she's so funny. I follow her on Twitter and she's really, really funny and I like how honest she is. And so I really want to see her live. I think I still really, really want to see Lauv live. Oh, you haven't seen him? No, I've never seen him. I thought you went to that Coachella. He never played at Coachella when I went. You might be thinking Lainey. I saw Lainey at Coachella. Oh, maybe then. The artist that I really want to see live when things are over is Sabrina Claudio. So she was supposed to open for the weekend or she was one of the acts for the weekend concert that was supposed to happen in 2020. And I really want to go, but obviously COVID. But yeah, I really want to see Sabrina Claudio. She R&B? Yeah, she's R&B. She's very like Alina Baraz, the weekend kind of vibes, R&B. Yeah. So Sharon would not like Yeah, you would not like her stuff at all. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, I had a question too, and it's kind of similar to Jam's, but if you could see one performance or one song live, which would it be and why? So it doesn't even have to be, this is my favorite song. It's just seeing it live would be life-changing kind of thing can we use a got seven yeah you can relate it to got seven mine isn't love on the brain by rihanna i would give my whole left kidney and right kidney to see that song live why it's so good and i've i've watched her videos of when she performs it live and she's so into the song and the song itself is so I feel like it's just a song that's a lot better live than it would be recorded and on Spotify. <sighs> I love that song <sighs> so much. Okay, can I have two? One Western, no. one K-pop? <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For my Western one, it just triggers something because Vicky said Rihanna. And what I want to see live would never happen. But I would like to dream that well. But this is the Umbrella Remix. By Chris Brown and Rihanna. It was when they were together and they did a remix and it goes like, you could be my Cinderella. Rella, rella. Yeah, we'll never see that live and I'm just stuck watching this 480p quality one where they did it. But that would be amazing if I could ever see that live in my lifetime. And the one that I could see live in my lifetime that I really, really want to see is Paige by GOT7 because that mm. one is just such a fun song such a fun concert song and every time i've watched them perform it they just have so much passion and like so much love in performing and just like their concert and stage presence so i really really want to see it live and i've danced to it numerous times in my bathroom pre-shower so pumped like ready to sing my heart out knowing which part to jump at at which part of the song so yeah the way jackson says I think I, I, think love, I you. love you. Oh, 10 out of so 10 funny. sound effects. <laughs> I have a very specific video of him in a very specific outfit and the way he sings into the mic for that just one line. Is, is, it, into is, it the, is it the one from the concert series where he's so into it? He's like, I think I yep. love you. Yes. <laughs> and he's in a shortlist <gasps> of the vest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so... I would obviously choose to see a BTS performance, but the song that I would see isn't all seven of them. It's only three of them, and it's the rap line, J-Hope, Suga, and RM, and it's a song called Tear. And the reason why, it's because you wouldn't think anything of it maybe when you listen to the song, but then when you see them perform, you know it means something. And basically, the song is for the year 2017 slash 2018 i don't know if you guys know this but that was a year that they were heavily considering disbanding because that's when they blew up and the fame got to a lot of them like very emotionally physically and mentally and they were considering breaking up and so this song is about that and if you listen to the lyrics it's so raw and painful and when you see them perform you know it means something and every time i watch a video i literally get goosebumps because it's so powerful and it like breaks your heart knowing what the lyrics are about. Ugh, I, but yeah, I would, if I could see one performance, it would be that one. Dude, those songs and those moments are why, again, why I love music so much is like, 
as someone who hates talking about emotions and someone who's really bad at it, when I hear songs that can do it so well, I'm just like, wow, this speaks to me in a whole nother level. Or I think I like songs that at first glance, you don't think anything of it. And then if you listen to the lyrics or if you watch a performance, it changes your perspective because you know what it's about. Mm, Sick. That is our three song recommendation and a whole lot of I love music for this one. So to wrap it up, thank you everybody for listening. And please let us know if you have any songs you'd like to recommend us. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.